Pair 06 HPX Gator. We had a lot of fun pulling the kids around in the snow this winter, but this thing's got a lot of issues, so we're gonna tackle a whole bunch of them. Yeah, basically it runs and moves barely, and um, everything else is broken. Let's fix it. Here we go. First things we're gonna do is fix this fender because somebody smashed something. We bought a light, it's the wrong light, of course, but uh, we'll make it work. So we're gonna take this fender off and see if we can uh, repair that with some plastic welding. Once I figure out how to get it off, take basically this whole thing apart. The dash, this is broken, so we gotta fix that. Not that that's a huge issue. There's the, there's the latch for it. Uh, we're gonna give it a good bath, clean it up. Little things like this are a problem. Four wheel drive switch doesn't work. We're gonna pull this dash apart. Basically disassemble a whole bunch of it, try to fix it, and put it back together again. None of the toggle switches work. Um, once in a while, the four wheel drive kicks on, which is worrisome because I doubt that it's coming on because of the electrical. Not that that's super crucial for bombing around the yard, but uh, once in a while the four wheel drive, you need her. The uh, diff lock does work. Um, I don't think that maybe that works, not that important. The car needs cleaning and the accelerator pedal doesn't work. It's always kind of bogging down when you first start. And we're gonna spruce it up a little bit. So here we go. Okay, so the hood came off with just on the bottom hinges and that allowed to take the front grill off, which is a bolt here and here, and one down below here and here. The fenders weren't even attached with anything, and I think they're aftermarket because there's holes in the frame to bolt these, or, or in the, the floor to bolt these down, and uh, there was no bolts in there, there's no holes in there. So these were just rattling around, which is why they're all cracked, which is a shame because that might be an aftermarket because I can't see deer leaving it like that. The light wasn't bolted in at all, it was loose. To get the fenders off, just the bolts underneath here into the roll cage, and all I did was just ratchet strap it down to the back just to tilt it up. I don't feel like taking any of that stuff back off there. So we'll take it outside, we'll pressure wash everything, we'll clean it up. Um, the four wheel drive wasn't working because it's not even plugged in. There's a button there for it. But that that toggle switch isn't hooked up to anything. I don't know what's going on. Maybe they, they moved it to this toggle switch and that toggle switch is broken. So we'll move it back to this one. We don't need that one. We got another toggle switch here, which is also broken. And that was to do these lights, but they were stuck on all the time. So I don't know where this plug goes, but it's starting to corrode. That would be nice if it had a home. And um, yeah, we'll check fuses and relays and everything else. But uh, first things first, let's wash everything. And uh, I don't want to fix these plastics before anything. So here we go. Okay, so we need to run the wires through this fender, but the fender's all cracked pretty severely. There's not a whole lot left holding that on. But uh, I also want to bed liner the inside of it, and that will make it stronger. So to fix this plastic, it's actually really simple. There's a couple, couple tricks to it. And your best alley is steel wool. And basically when you melt plastic with this little welding welder, all you're doing is melting plastic. Once it's cracked, all the grains are broken and you're never gonna just glue it back together again. So basically all you wanna do is take steel wool and push it into the plastic somewhere where it's hidden. So we'll show you some tricks. There's also um, these little sticks that you can buy that you can melt in there. The problem is that plastic is made up of different polys or the different materials and unless those materials are exactly the same in those pieces that you buy it's not going to adhere very well we're just going to do a couple quick little tacks on we're just going to melt it together there's no strength in there but that will hold it together then we'll push all the uh, steel wool into the back of it in a nice big clump so it'll be nice and strong and then we'll weave a little bit of fine strand into the top side of it and then we'll cover it up with some plastic that we shave off on the back. And that should should work pretty good. Basically one of these things has got this little flat round tip. So we're gonna warm it up and then basically just touch it. And just kind of melting that, squishing that around, letting that cool. 
but I'll kind of hold it in place. Now basically we're just taking a mat and we're just pulling it apart so it's not crazy thick so you can kind of see through it. You kind of want it to go every direction. We're just going to lay that right over top and then we're just going to melt that in there. And you want a consistency, something like that. You're going to have some hair sticking out. You can trim those later. But that's basically what we're after here. I think I'm going to grab a zip tie and just zip tie my gun because I don't want to hold the trigger the whole time. But basically when it's hot, it's hot and the plastic around it warms up. So if you start in an area, just keep kind of pushing that. Now you don't have to use steel wool, you can use staples, you can use wire. Basically you just got to melt something in the plastic that gives it strength on either side of the crack. Make sure you get stainless steel wool, because otherwise it's gonna rust. You'll have the only rusty plastic gator out there. And it'll be stronger than new, actually, because the steel fibers are gonna interlock in the plastic, and that's actually gonna make it stronger than just straight up plastic. There we go. I'm gonna sand that down the high spots. We'll put a little bit of filler over top just to clean that up, to clean up the colors a little bit. Okay, now for the plastic that uh, you need a little bit of filler to make it look good, some tin snips and just grab a little slice somewhere where you'll never see it, like a small little piece just off the bottom of the fender maybe. This is kind of what surgeons do if you like mess up your face. They'll uh, shave a little bit of this off your butt and glue it to your face. It's basically what we're doing. We're just taking a little bit off of the, off of somewhere down low that gets dirty all the time. And we just want a couple little slivers like this. You don't need much. And then we'll glue those in place and see how that looks. Okay, so I need to finish that up, uh, just that welding. We'll sand that, we'll make that look better. But took it apart a little bit farther and washed it again. Uh, took a couple holders out. Uh, there's nothing holding these on. I think there's supposed to be plastic tabs in here. So you just pull up on them. Uh, two screws, right, or two nuts that hold the center cover on and then the shifter handles are being held on by a nut on the top. So you pop the little cap off the shifter, take the nut off and then you can and tap the bottom of it to knock the handle up. Um, I wanted to look underneath here and make sure that all the wiring is okay because our wiring goes through here and seems to be rubbing right here. See, see this? Um, so there was plastic sheathing on it, but you can see that that has split and now this is rubbing on here and I'm sure that that is not good. Maybe we caught it in time, but I don't know because here or three relays probably around the four wheel drive the lights and maybe the main system so um, we've got a couple fuses here and I checked all the fuses the fuses are okay but none of these have power on them so what's happening is a relay all the spades face the same way except for one so see how they're straight up and down this one sideways so that's easy to tell the ones that are opposite across from each other those take big power and the ones on the sides take little power so you're powering one of the little wires grounding the other to connect these two terminals together and that allows you to use a little bit of current to power big current so what we are doing is trying to figure out why we don't have power on any of these whatsoever with the key on so we'll clean up all the wiring um, get rid of all this hack stuff that people did before and trace it farther back. Main power needs to either come from the battery or go onto the starter. So we'll check that out and uh, I'll let you know what I find.
Okay, so these uh, wires, I think 605, if I remember, 615 and 605 are what turns on the four wheel drive. And that is done on the front axle, as best as I can tell. Now, the gray wire, which is 615, goes all the way down and turns on the diff. Now it gets power from 605, which turns around and goes to this relay. But this relay, all the yellow wires are positive. They all go into a big chunk right here and all of these are positive. It's in the center terminal um, and when the relay is off, that one is connected to the power one, the main big wire. When you turn the relay on with these outside two wires here, the terminal jumps from this middle one to the outside one. So with the grounds being on all the time, the purple wires, and both yellow ones having power, this relay is on all the time and this terminal is never getting power. So it would be impossible to turn the four wheel drive on. So if it was like this since factory, it's never had four wheel drive once. When I hot wire the gray wire, which goes to the diff from my fuse panel, so I just go to the back of the fuse panel and grab one that's on the fuse side. So if I mess up, it's just gonna pop the fuse. And I clamp it onto there and I spin the back axle. I get four wheel drive. See that? Front tire is going. So to disengage it, you disconnect it and it's still engaged until you back up. So you back up and then it free wheels. So now that's not spinning anymore. I'm gonna go in the house and do a little extra homework and make sure I'm correct, but I'm pretty sure that this terminal needs to go on that side and then four wheel drive will work just fine. There's really no issue. I took the loom off, inspected everything, found a couple bare wires. So it's well worth doing. And we're gonna run a couple extra wires. We're gonna add some lights to the canopy. These lights seem to keep getting knocked off, so might as well put them up high and get rid of that. Pretty sure there's nothing wrong with four wheel drive. I'm pretty sure that it has never worked and I'm pretty sure it'll work by the time I'm done. Got some new uh, toggle switches coming that light up. Um, extra ones for the backlights and the light bar on the front. And then, um, yeah, we'll get new uh, gauge clusters so all the oil lights and everything work. And then we should be fine. Here we go. Okay, so doing my homework, it's just needs power to turn the front four wheel drive on. So when you're driving, the axle is always spinning towards the front. The front diff to add four wheel drive locks the spinning shaft from the back half to the ones on the front. So um, the relay should not turn on the wire that goes to the switch because the switch is not meant to handle that much power. Now, it's a pretty small gauge wire, so I don't think there's a lot of draw on there, but typically you power up the switch, which would power up the relay, which would turn on the axle. So I don't know whether the Mexican, little, little Mexican boy that was wiring it wasn't paying attention or didn't get enough sleep or whatever, but I'm going to rewire it to do that. Relays are super neat because you pull this little tab out and you can just pull the wires out and move them around. So I'm gonna do that and make it so that the switch turns on the relay, which turns on the four wheel drive only when the key is on. When the key is off, the relay automatically turns off. Your four wheel drive is automatically disengaged. Okay, so this plug and this plug, which is live, you can see the green on there. It usually means that there's power there. And this plug, don't go anywhere. They have no spots to go, but the wiring, because it's nicely labeled, um, 670 and 675 and these two, they go through the loom and they end up over here. And they are, um, also they don't go anywhere here. So there's that green 670, 675. That goes somewhere, but not on this machine. There's that black and red one. And, oh, that might not be the one. I gotta check those. And there's that other one. So, now I have nice neat wires that are already in the frame. I got hollow tubes underneath here. So I can put a light bar at the back here, uh, or some sort of lights at the back, and uh, just use these wires so I can power them up, that's fine. 
Uh, this yellow wire, because it's power and it's already got this horrible connector in here, don't ever use those. I can use to turn the toggle switch on. And then I'll use the brown wire to trigger the relay and then I'll pull the gray wire out and use that at the end of the relay to turn on my diff. Okay, Amazon came through. We got a couple uh, rocker switches, LED light bar, rear lights and rock lights. I'll put the rock lights on the headlights and then the LED light bar, I'm gonna put a 50 some odd inch on the front, basically goes from one side to the other. That'll finish this bottom off nice. Um, I'm gonna replace these with uh, some LED ones. And then I'm gonna put a 22 inch light bar at the back. I'm gonna take this off because it rattles like crazy. Um, as you're driving, that gets really annoying. So I'm going to um, bed liner, the top, the bottom, and I might not be able to do the bottom, but I'll do the top and then do the floor and then uh, this little piece and that will really clean that up nicely. And now that the four wheel drive is working, we gotta change the tires because those are 26 inch, those are 24 inch and those are just gonna chew that up to pieces. And we did buy, we were trying to find another 26 inch for the front because I love rubbing my tires on the front and ripping my plastics up, um, but we can't find a 26 inch tire on a 10 inch rim so we were going to get more 10 inch rims nice ones and put the 10 inch rims with those and find one more 26 inch tire to put on that rim so put the nice rims on the turf and put the crappy ones in the mud just the yellow ones but instead we can't find anything that matches so we ended up getting 24 inch wider ones and we'll just pop those on the back for now so i don't tear up my lawn i'm gonna pop in some switches I have a four wheel drive one coming yet, a new one that matches this so they'll all light up nice. And then we got a new screen coming for this too so that these bulbs will actually light up properly and look good. Might as well fix the cigarette lighter. Might as well throw in a stereo while we're at it. Maybe some massaging seats. I don't know. I Again, it's just me getting carried away with my belts. But anyway, it's going to be nice when we're done. They all are. Okay, so we got the switches all done up and they light up nice. And then that'll tell you that those light. Really happy with those. Put the link down below on the Amazon link for those. The four wheel drive switch is coming, so two by four will light up all the time until you hit four by four. And that'll light up. And that's what turns on these relays. Now 305 or 670, 675 wire that I was talking about. That goes to the back, and I'm pretty sure that, that ended up here. And that's for this switch here, which is your automatic tilt on the uh, dump bed. We're not gonna worry about that. So use those wires. Um, those go to this relay, two wires. And then I ordered a 22 inch light bar, which will fit nicely right in between here. They've come down, they're so cheap, 50 bucks for a nice light bar with two little side lights. So put the side lights kind of right here on the inside, we'll point them out. The bottom of this pipe is empty, so I can run the wires through here. I'll probably have them come out the bottom here and then we'll strap them to the side, we'll drill down through there and then we'll connect them to these two. One will be for the backlight and the other one will be for the side light, even though they'll just be on one switch. For the light at the front, I ran three wires through some loom. You can use an extension cord too that has the loom around it already too. I just couldn't find a nice one or a black one. So run those wires out. Uh, ground, I'll put the amber lights on with the headlights and then the um, LED light bar will turn a relay on which will turn on the light bar. My light bar right now is just my Milwaukee uh, under hood light. So um, to do that, uh, I didn't run the last wire into the relay here yet, but the relay I ran into my last available fuse. So it's nicely fused into here. And then we got rid of those extra wires. I have one extra ignition wire here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do that, but that yet. I don't know where these ones go, so we'll uh, we'll trace those. We might leave those because everything else is done nice and neat now. I'm confident about the wiring. We'll loom everything back up again, but I'll uh, I'll take my roof off first, drill some holes for the wires, put a little bit of rubber underneath here so that it doesn't make noise. Probably something from the hardware store. We'll paint, put everything back together again, and we're well on our way. I'd like to get this uh, bed liner put in place. So uh, basically just gonna take a wire wheel and just rough up the box because it's been done once before. 
It's definitely not gonna be perfect, but it'll be better than it is. And the floor, you can see where the most abuse is, where your heel is. And we'll do the inside of the fenders now that that's fixed. So basically we're just gonna scuff the inside of the fenders with a pad that comes with the Rust-Oleum uh, truck bed liner. And then we'll mix that together. We've got other videos all on uh, how to do the bed liner. So you can check that out in great detail, but we're just gonna skim over that. This is just wanna take the shine off, scuff it up a bit, and that'll help the bed liner stick. Knocks off any dirt, no grease on here. Not good that way. We'll see how much more rigid it is once we put the bed liner on there. Now you want it to give a little bit, because if it does hit something, you want it to flex. Um, but at the same time, a little bit of strength in that can't hurt. which just came from Amazon. We got our two little side lights. They'll go right here somewhere. Make it so that you can tilt these kind of around. Whatever, I don't know. <laughs> the little light bar is gonna go on the back. It's gonna be pretty slick, actually. These things are so cheap, considering that they were like a few hundred bucks a couple of years ago. They are now 40 bucks for three lights. Wow, here we go. got everything wired up underneath here just the headlights left they added a bunch of these and they didn't go anywhere problem is now that we've got these nice light bars uh, these bulbs um, aren't very good but that holder from green line was $41 which is very reasonable the lens however was 128 and when you put the bulb in there you turn the lights on that's how bright that is, but if you turn the light bar on, the LEDs, that's a, that's a big difference. <laughs> so you can see that on the, on the wall across the shop, no problem. So then I remembered we had these bulbs. We were going to put these in the GTO. They're nice little halo LED lights. They're super bright, and they actually fit pretty good. Put them in the bag. They, they fit in, and they, the lens kind of pops in there, and it looks pretty good, actually. So then I just have to rewire everything and put new plugs and stuff on it. I gotta have a way to hold it in now. And actually a paint can um, is pretty much the perfect size to go around the outside of that. I think if I cut just inside here, this little lip will go on the back of that. And then when I put my bolt through there, that'll give it some strength, just that lip. So that's what we're gonna do. Finishing up that wiring, we got ignition just for that halo. So the halo is always on. And then we've got headlights. Now we could have high beams and low beams, but I gotta draw the line somewhere. I'm just gonna give it low beams. And I need these lights for if we ever go down to the road. So this is for something like to go to Kevin's real quick or something like that, or uh, I, I don't know. But uh, we got enough lights, we don't need any more. We don't need any more lights. <laughs> so, because I could put little bulbs in here too, but. Uh, are gonna stop just the halo and the LED low beams for going down the road and then I'll finish putting the rest of it back together again. Here we go. Okay, 
Okay, so wiring's pretty well figured out. These two relays are for my extra lights. The halo's plumbed in with the ignition, so they're on all the time. The headlights put on to the headlight switch, and then we ran all the wiring nice and neat. Got my LED ambers for the top, so we'll wire those in. Those are also plumbed into the headlight. So when you put the key on, we actually have decent lights now on the outside. Oh no, oh, the, uh, there we go. <laughs> I did not butt connect that one yet, or that one, I have to do that yet. Then when we put the headlights on, we've got lots of extra light, and then we've got the LED light on there, and then we've got the back ones too, yeah. So we're nice and lit up. So now we'll loom everything, tie everything down nice. My hour meter's broken, so I don't have that plugged in. We'll order that. We have the gauge cluster, um, just the lights. That is my oil light. We got a new dash coming for that. And I still need my four wheel drive light or my toggle switch. So they're coming as well. And there it is, nicely tucked away, nicely wrapped up and secured. Put away, nothing's gonna rattle, nothing's gonna shake. So we can start putting the front end back together again. Now the four wheel drive is fixed. Uh, I gotta throw the same size tires on there because otherwise she's gonna chew up the four wheel drive. So we'll pull the, these off, push them down and throw on some, uh, some nice new turf tires. Okay, so to get rid of the squeaking, you can see exactly where it's been rubbing and a little bit of duct tape, bam. Put a little duct tape on there, we'll bolt that back down again. I don't know if it was squeaking because I think it was the roll bar down there it wasn't actually tight and that's what was doing most of the squeaking but regardless, we'll just put a little bit of tape over top and as long as it doesn't rub, it'll stay there forever. Like as, as long as it's not able to wear through because it should be bolted down properly, then um, we'll be fine and it'll be quiet. And I like, I like quiet. I do, I really do. Okay, don't mind all the ash. We had a campfire, we gotta wash it. But I got my nice John Deere new dash. I'm excited about that, look at that. But the hardest thing is actually cleaning this off. So the old sticker, it was like very crusty. And you gotta get all the glue off, otherwise it's not gonna stick. So we've got some uh, just paint thinner. Just wipe the rest of the glue off and then some razor blades. So I'm gonna scratch that off a little better. And then I can put the new gauge cluster on. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be like a brand new used gator. And then I think we gotta try out these lights. Maybe go golfing. Because we got this off eBay. Um, but I think I gotta use both hands for this. Let's see if I can balance the camera on my knee. That's probably a really bad idea. It's gonna fall and it's gonna break. That's about it. There we go. Oil light's on, that's supposed to be on. Let's see if it starts. Ah! Oh, yeah! Oh, nice. All right, one last thing. Replace the seats with these. That's better. I'm gonna replace the seats with these seats from Princess Auto. These are a little bit nicer than what was on there. The water runs off nicely down the sides and doesn't get your butt wet. It doesn't fill up all of these stupid, these little cracks. They hold the water and now my butt is wet from sitting here. So, and then we got rid of the yellow. Then there's no more yellow. Um, eventually we'll get some new rims and then uh, we kind of black this thing out. It's gonna look pretty slick. But I'm gonna do that in the morning because the holes don't line up 100%. So I'll make that work. And uh, I gotta unpack the other one there anyway, and then we gotta wash it again because it's kind of gross. All right, so our gator. Now these gators go for about six, seven thousand dollars Canadian here. We picked this up for eight hundred dollars in Texas, and we only did that because we were buying a dually at the same time and figured, hey, we might. There's not much point in driving home empty. So our initial cost was fairly cheap for this gator, and it's super practical for us around the yard and as a pit buggy. With the four-wheel drive being okay, the engine being okay, and it being generally in good shape, we decided to spruce it up a little bit. Now it adds up fast to get a 
going, we needed a starter, a battery, coils, and spark plugs. Those are just givens. And we needed an ignition module. The ignition module was the most expensive part, but now we have a running buggy and we can see what else is wrong. The lights we actually had left over from another project, but they are on Amazon for about 100 bucks for the headlights. The light bars at the back were only $30 US, and the 50 inch light bar for the front, we actually had left over from another project as well. They generally go for about 100 bucks. On top of that, the seats, I uh, didn't want the wet seat. We found some really nice seats at Princess Auto for 150 bucks. And the bed liner was also left over. I got two kits to do a pickup, but only ended up using one. Now those generally go for about 100 bucks as well. On top of that, we've got wiring, loom, fuel, two matching tires and we have a fully functioning, nice looking buggy. Now, if you were to do this all yourself, I don't know if you'd wanna spend that much right away. We could have had a working, moving, functional buggy that was well put together for about half of what we invested into it after we got it running. But we thought, you know what, let's spruce this thing up a little bit. I love saving these old pieces of equipment rather than going out and buying a brand new one and signing on the dotted line. It's kind of our own personal buggy now that already has a story. It is a really practical tool for us around the yard. All right, now to answer the question, how good are these lights? Well, there's only one way to find out. Well, here I am waiting for my tee off partner late as usual of course nobody's here it's like oh andy is that you <laughs> uh yeah you said uh, 11 o'clock tee off right yeah in the morning oh <laughs> sorry man well don't worry i think we can uh we can see most of it you're up <laughs> all right see what we can do all right the course is empty we got it to ourselves we're off the l4 because right. i suck at golf how about you <laughs> yeah i'm looking what, to what suck. you got what do you got those, uh, are, those aren't golfing shoes buddy i think we match yeah we're boots. <laughs> you going first yeah yeah i'm hitting the callaway one <laughs> look at the camera <laughs> i can't <laughs> oh it's bright enough that's for sure glorified golf cart could be the eclipse, I don't know. <laughs> it's really bright. <laughs> <laughs> Just recreating it. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go golf, the course is empty. We're gonna have some fun. Andy, you're, but you did make the first divot. <laughs> yeah, it looked really good. It's a big stretch. Got a stretch, man. Whoa! Neil has the course looking pretty nice. Good job, Neil. Still hasn't landed. <laughs> Might have gone to the moon. Oh. I know where my place is, and I think it's in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, will it start with all these lights on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you remember where you landed? Yeah. <laughs> Way up. Watch the ball bounce back and smash out the lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just starts to sizzle and then it burns down to the ground. Nice shot. <laughs> yeah, ain't no thing. Night golf, day golf, whatever. We have more stuff coming up on the Gator. Hopefully you guys got some tips. If you have your own Gator, on, on uh, it doesn't take much to fix it up. Don't need massive budget. Amazon. LED lights are like dirt cheap now. Oh, man. We got paint can lids holding the lights in. The lights are found nice. left over. So uh, next episode though, on the Gator, we'll be putting a toolbox in the back and a bench seat in the back. We got some new rims for it. And then I'll officially turning it into the pit buggy for the Audi. It's got a little bit of a side job. It's got a little bit of a side job, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I use that thing every day, all day. It just no doubt. zipping back and forth, super handy. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching guys. Uh, remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. And lots of other stuff going on on the other channel. We got the Edison project going on. We got we got so much. I don't even know when this video is coming out, but Aaron's got like <laughs> seven videos to edit, so. <laughs> and here we are golfing. <laughs> just have a good time, man. Catch you on the next one.